Hey everybody, it's Richard and I'm at Ren HQ in Lincoln in California. And today is a special day because we've had a rather impressive visitor. <laughs> An old friend of Kevin's popped round to come and say hello to us. It is Gary Fisher, the man, the myth, the legend. And he's come to have a chat with us. There we go. Kevin, Gary, good morning guys, how are you? Good morning, hello. <laughs> Great. Look! Look at this array of Ren products. I'm loving it, Kevin. What are you What are you talking to Gary about? Well, I'm starting with our new uh, rear hub. It features. Uh, first of all, it's all serviceable by hand. And it would be if I just pre-lightened it for go. you. There if we go. Had, <laughs> there's our cassette body. There's uh, this is the Shimano uh, HG. We also offer the Micro Spline and the SRAM XD. Um, it features the star ratchet mechanism as originally owned by Willie Hughey, um, perfected by DT Swiss, and uh, now being used by us um, to absorb some of the extreme torque that's used uh, with e-bikes, uh, especially the mid-drive motors. The cassette bodies are steel. Um, the weight penalty is about 10 grams. Yep. Not a factor at all on uh, uh, e-bikes. So. Um, we found another little niche market for us that uh, with the growth in e-bikes and the growth in mid-drive motors, um, the same same hub is going to work fine for a big 260-pound hulking, you know. So uh, we found a, a niche and, and we tried to address it. The bar in front of Gary is um, our Perseverance flat bar and uh, it was designed to provide more hand positions, more um, places for your GPS, places for your camera. Um, and uh, it comes, we, we offer a set of armrests, which are fully adjustable, um, to allow you to set it up for the type of, of riding you're gonna do. Gary, one of the things, I think the hub was particular interest, because you were chatting to me earlier about, one of the issues we've got is about the longevity, about people having bikes that they, that last, and having a hub that isn't going to get crunched up, this is better sustainable, isn't it? Sustainable cycling. That's what Kevin's all about, you know. It's like it's these seen product uh, go from idea to birth to uh, actual use. Yes. To like, how long is this thing going to hold up? And that's a huge thing right now. It's like a, it's harder than ever to find a good qualified mechanic. Yeah. And I I ask the question, does your bike come with a mechanic, you know, it's <laughs> a real problem. And you get the way the fork is designed with the, uh, the so-called upside down design is, you know, that's just gonna lend itself to lasting longer. Yep. And gosh, the handlebar, well, it's all about having the different positions you can be on, take the different uh, appliances, accoutrements along yes. with you and everything, and have exactly your home on the road. Yeah. And the hub, oh my goodness, you know, like he said, 10 grams can make a huge amount of difference. Are you going to be broken down with <laughs> no parts out in the middle of you know where? Yep. Or true. you don't know where? <laughs> are you going to be broken down or are you going to finish the event? That's what it's all about. We, we, are, we are so lucky to have you here. And um, what, is your, what is your sort of main focus? I mean, you are such an advocate for micromobility uh, across the world. What's what's the biggest you know we're slightly off topic. What's the biggest challenge we've got in terms to get more people utilizing the humble bicycle? I think is you know just showing them it's possible. Yeah, it's the old thing of like once you change the gray matter between the ears, everything is easy. Yep. You know, and that's it. That people got to be shown that this can happen. And part of that is reliability. You know, that you go out in the morning and there's air in the tires and the machine is ready to go. Yep. You know, and you get there and you get there and you get there. I mean, that's one of the great advantages of micro, so-called micro mobility. Yeah. Is that you're not constrained by traffic so much. So instead of a half hour window <laughs> that you're expected to get there in there, you know, it's more like a five minute window when you ride a bike and you just go along your regular route. I, I love there was a phrase, I didn't coin it, a phrase someone said, you're, you're never in traffic, you are traffic. Yeah. You know, and for every yeah, guy yeah. on a bike, you, you are, you're removing yourself as part of the problem, well, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we like to say that the, the bike lane is the one that really delivers. It delivers uh, humans, you know, yeah. human transport and everything. It's a high throughput uh, lane and everything, or these other lanes are like there that uh, just fill up with cars and don't move. <laughs> You just you're just back from the Taipei show. 
anything there that gave you sort of cause for concern or hey that's a great innovation or is it well, happy say, disappointed what do you think it was amazing to see uh, the per perseverance of the taiwanese you know? yeah they just refused to uh, you know stop smiling you know they, they just kept <laughs> yeah. going you know with things and uh, they keeping a lot of people on you know in their companies even though they're the guys at the end of the whole you know supply chain yeah yeah holding the bag and everything they kept well, it's a interesting lot of too, Gary. On. I mean, I'm I'm seeing some investment being made, correct? And you know, everybody else is pulling back, and the Taiwanese factory owners are smart. They became yeah. very successful, and right. during COVID, they had a boom like nothing they've ever seen before. Yeah. And and so they're not stupid. They save their money. They are investing. They're right. they're building new factories. And so I'm highly encouraged to see that. And then for you to come back and report basically, you know, it's the same they thing. They're, they're reinvesting and their factories are ones that uh, use a lot more robotics and just a lot more precision and everything. Because the other thing they see on the horizon that you saw there is the Chinese are coming. Oh my goodness, you yeah. know, and there's a lot of like uh, government investment yep. in there, you know, great evidence of uh, you know, investment by the government to like come after the, the cycling market. So it's going to be really interesting next few years what, what goes on. You know, yeah. so on one hand, you know, there's all this opportunity and everything. On the other hand, it's like sticking to your guns and the guns are like, look, it's harder than, harder than ever to find a qualified mechanic and especially one that will come along in the oddball sure. ride I want to do. Sure. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I just want stuff that works from beginning to end, right. please, Kevin. If we stick well, with our guns with that, we're going to be golden. <laughs> I mean, you know, I uh, I look at our fork. It can be completely disassembled by hand. Yeah. You need a, what a twenty-six and, and a twenty-seven mil, mil socket, and that's it. That's it. This completely disassembled by hand. Right. Um, it isn't going to fail. It's designed to last and. Um, what? Serviceability, I think, is is important. Durability is important. Liability is important. And you know, having worked for Shimano, Cannondale, Bell Sports, liability was drilled into my head. And, oh, and yeah. so, you know, we're now ten yeah. years in business. We have not crossed my fingers. We've not had any right. failures. Right. And right. the reason is, you know, we test things beyond the, the yeah. ISO standard. Um, uh, what were we just testing? Oh, a, a fork. The ISO standard was, let's say, 100,000 cycles at mm -hmm. 50 pounds. We right. increased the weight to 75. We took the cycles to 200,000. We don't have to, but for our own assurance. You want to see what happens. Exactly. You see, we want to see where it breaks, how it breaks. Right. That's, yeah. that's a big deal. I know? That's true. Because the whole true. failure thing, you know, like <laughs> yeah. what's going on there, you know? One of, right. one of the things we're just releasing, Gary, I don't know whether you, you might have seen it, is we're, we're, we're adapting. We've, we've got a new fork, a new coil fork for cargo bikes. Because right. we think one of the big deficiencies in the cargo bike markets, which, which is growing exponentially, it's fantastic, but you haven't got the comfort and the reliability at the front end. You know, you're carrying precious cargo whether it's your kids or your fresh produce from the market and we've now just launching this this coil cargo bike fork and the whole thing goes back to what you just said it's about reliability people can trust it you've got a big bike with there's, a big person you know, you know what else it is there the geometries yes get them right because like a lot of our tech comes from the racing side and everything yeah nah, that's not what this is this thing has right. a super long wheelbase yep. And in the uh, case of the box bike, it's way out in front of you, this, yep. you know, and it's a different animal. Well, the, well, this We've is... been talking about that, you know, that's a, it's like you can solve a lot of problems by having the correct geometry. We, we've, one of the, one of yeah. the advantages, I know, I know this, well, this is a, a Ren video, but one of the fundamental advantages of the inverted fork without yeah, the yeah. bridge is we can adjust the travel. Oh, yeah. So if you go to a bike and they say, look, our geometry is we want 50 mil travel in the front for our car, or we want 60 or 70. Right. We literally put different clips in and we can make the fork fit your oh, geometry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right. and, what, and, and there's another point that I think we don't make enough is one of sustainability. So we, our fork will fit 10 bikes. 
we don't make 10 different forks so one fork has multiple uses and multiple functionality right. without the arch you've got different wheel sizes can go in there so yeah, so, so we're producing less less units to right. fulfill more of the market well and to richard's point you know with this new cargo fork um we have the ability to stand in a booth in Europe and wait for the UPS, DHL, whomever has responsibility for getting product into these small inner cities. Right. And they're looking at, at cargo bikes. Right. And there is no suspension for a cargo bike. Nothing that works. And, and well, so, it's not made for the cargo bike. Well, no. And yeah. the thing that's nice about it, it is you could come in and yeah, say, yeah. I see you have a 20-inch wheel. My bike is a 24-inch wheel. The way our fork right, is designed, right. I just cut my tubes to different lengths. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my internal guts are the same. You know, we've paid for a set of crowns, a set of dropouts, and everything else can be customized. Yeah, so yeah. if you as a designer said, I need a uh, 40 millimeter travel, but I want it on a 450 millimeter axle to crown, we can nail it exactly. If you yeah, said, yeah. I want 448, we could do it for 448. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're really trying to enter sustainable user friendly categories and whether Richard alluded to kids on a cargo bike never crossed my mind but Cameron just came back from a trip and he said oh I was in I think it was Boise or something like that and he said I couldn't believe the moms that were riding around with yeah. two, two kids on the cargo bikes well, they need a little bit different suspension than a guy who's going to deliver 400 pounds of UPS packages or 400 pounds of DHL packages. Our yeah. fork, we can customize the spring. We can do so many things right. to make it the best it can be for that user, whether it's a commercial use by DHL yeah. or whether it's a consumer use, your wife going to the market, picking up a loaf of bread, you know, a bottle of wine or two, and, uh, you know, um, yeah. we're, what, we're, are you are you going around? Is that what's that? <laughs> get an extra bottle of wine in because you're about to visit Gary. Sure, exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, we're, and the, the funny thing is, we're having a good time. You yeah. know, we're up, we're both of the same generation, and to have seen the evolution of the bike to where it is, and uh, to be involved in it, I I feel so fortunate. You know, and uh, love what I do, and to bring someone like Richard uh, to come in and and, and uh, you know. To, to have somebody look at what you're doing and say, yeah, I'd like to be involved in that. I'd like to support it. And um, it gives you a confidence that you're moving in the right direction. The whole market is upside down. We're, we're ahead of last year. Last year was a record year for us. Um, so we must be doing something right. Yeah. And we're not trying to be super big. We just want when you get something good. You know that? That was a good buy. It was a good purchase. I got value. Our fork, can we do other things and add different features? Yes. But I'm no longer at six hundred and ninety nine bucks. I'm at eleven hundred dollars right. for features that you're probably not gonna use. Right. You know? So like I said, we're just having a blast. And uh you know, having Richard over here for a couple of weeks, um, getting to know It's been a real hardship coming over to California <laughs> for a month. I mean, I, I, I didn't want to leave the cold and wet in England and come to California sunshine, but I'm, I'm prepared to. This is the kind of guy I am. And I get to meet guys like this. This is, what's, this is what's important in the bike industry. People who are pushing the boundaries. And who's buying lunch? Who's, it, well, <laughs> hey, Gary drove, Ga, do, you know, do you know what? Do you know what I can tell you right now? I'm going to buy lunch. I'm going to be somehow conned into buying lunch. But That's I think... Idea. <laughs> yeah. It's the celebrity factor. I, I think what's important, and I mean this genuinely, is you guys are still passionate about what you do. And I think it's kind of inspiring and kind of unusual for people to hang on to a passion. At our age, is that where he's going with yeah, this? I, I was trying really hard not to be. Uh, Got yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed you're still standing yeah, yeah. up right. Okay, look, we're gonna, we're gonna sign off for this. Um, Gary is here, we're gonna try and pick his brains. We're gonna buy him lunch and try and see what innovations are in that wonderful, wonderful inventive uh, mind of his. So um, thanks for watching and make sure you follow Gary on all his social channels. That's incredibly important. Um, read the stuff he's written. He is a pioneer at pushing forward the all the concepts around urban movement of people micro mobility and doing things that fundamentally benefit all of us so make sure you give him your support